All right, guys, got a new video card for you today. It's another GeForce 9600 GT. This one's from KFA2. What makes this one so special on the other one? Well, you'll notice a big dual slot cooler. That's because this card is overclocked. The other big feature that, to take in, uh, note of on this card is one gigabyte GDDR3 RAM. Bumped up the memory by half again, or well, rather, sorry, they doubled the memory on the card here with that overclock. Let's look at uh, some of the specs, what makes it a little bit different here. Your standard clock speed on the 9600 for the core clock is 650. They bumped it up 25 megahertz up to 675. Big jump, however, came in the memory. They went from 1800 megahertz on the stock speed all the way up to 2000 megahertz. Another great feature that they include is a software utility. Built in, they call it their XT utility. What that is, is it's an overclocking utility. You've got fan speed control, you can control the core clock, you can control the shader clock, the memory clock, everything in there, full control of there, right in the graphical interface. You don't have to mess around in the BIOS. You do it right from your operating system. Makes it very simple and very easy to control. You can see if you're losing stability, if you get pixelation, it'll happen up pretty quick. So you just go ahead, throttle it back down to whatever you need. Also, again, put the uh, change the fan from automatic to manual control, set it at your max speed, or if you're not gonna overclock, maybe you wanna underclock a little bit because you don't need quite as much power, you can go ahead and throttle the fan back to make it a lot quieter card. Let's take a look at some of the benchmarks on this card here. They uh, have changed uh, somewhat from the uh, standard 9600 GT. First game we're gonna look at is Enemy Territory Quake Wars. Let's take a look and see what we've got here. What we've got here at high settings, got an average frame rate of 53.6 frames per second and that was done at the 1920 by 1200 resolution so there is a very very playable game again your eye can't see over 24 frames a second anything faster than that is smooth video roughly right in that range so getting up to that 54 frames a second that's very very playable there and that is an average rate so that's not uh, the maximum that's what you're actually going to be seeing most of the time Next thing we're going to look at is Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Take a look there. Came up with an average frame rate there of a, almost 132 frames per second. Again, that's at the high settings at 1920 by 1200. So there, you're plenty there, even dropping down to whatever, you know, you go down into the minimum, you're still going to be well above a smooth uh, frame rate there for that. Now, we've got to talk about Crisis. Without that, you know, what do the benchmarks mean? As everyone wants to know, what can I run Crisis at? This one here, taking a look over at Crisis, came out to a minimum, or sorry, an average of 32 frames per second at the uh, 1920 by 1200 on all medium settings. Not quite as high up as the other two games, but Crisis is a whole different animal there. You got a, if you knock down the uh, resolution to the 1280 by 1024, actually getting a frame rate of 52 frames a second. So there's a very, very playable game, and the 1280 is still gonna be a nice looking uh, picture there on the resolution. Great screen there. Let's take a look at the card again here. Got your basics here on the card, your PCI Express bus, you got your SLI connector right up here. Nice looking dual slot cooler. Again, look how big that is. That is definitely a dual slot. You're gonna need a whole lot of space in there. Got uh, Looking at it over here on this side, is your standard S video. You see that in a lot along with the DVI. This card here, you see a lot of the 9600s come with a DVI to HDMI adapter. This one does not. The HDMI is built right onto the card. Don't have to worry about that extra dongle hanging off the back that you may knock out when you reach around there to plug something else into the back of your computer. HDMI built right onto the card. Let's go ahead and turn it around to the back here. Does require the one six pin PCI Express connector. So you make sure your power supply does have that and they do recommend a minimum of 400 watts for this one. Really need to be up a little bit higher and need to have that six pin get this card up and running here. One neat thing that this one does come with that you don't see a whole lot or you see a variation of it. It's an S video to composite, but rather than giving you that long bulky cable that's kind of a pain and you gotta get it, it ends up getting tangled up, things like that. It's an S video to component video right here on a little dongle so you don't have to worry about all those messy cables. Okay guys, that's about all I've got for you on the card here. If you have any questions, click Q&A at the top of the page. Call anybody at the call center. They're always uh, there to help uh, with answers for anything. Guys, I will see you next time. I'm Linus.
For more information on the KFA2 GeForce 9600 GT 1GB graphics card, head right over to CompUSA.com, type in G458-9608 into the search bar, or you can call us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 1-800-COMPUSA. Let's <laughs> go.